just be forewarned, this is probably going to become a common recurring theme in these reviews each week where I talk about Dynamite and I point out things that either aren't to my taste or just are objectively stupid, objectively bad. And the propaganda party of AEW, uh, the all egg white movement, is going to do everything they can to either minimize it or justify it. And it's just not sustainable, guys. Like, come on. Not everything can be so star-spangled, perfect, and awesome with your stupid frickin' wrestling show every week. That's ridiculous. Get off the high horse. Like, if we're being completely transparent here, like, if this was supposed to be some type of tribute to Brody Lee, we surprised we'd be run, rolling over in his damn grave. Outside of the cool thing of being able to see his son on TV. Like, I mean, what else would there to really be proud about with this show? Yes, there was some good stuff. Good does not mean great. When I see people throwing around great way too much, it's just a reflection of how truly far the standards have lowered and dropped when it comes to professional wrestling. As this show was a mess in a lot of ways and an absolute unmitigated clusterfuck featuring too many damn people. I think I had counted by the time you got to the beginning of the second hour, it was in the 40s, like probably even the high 40s in terms of the number of people that were on this show in one way or another via tag matches, via run-ins, via this promo segment, via this interview, via this pre-record. It is too many goddamn people. When you do that much with that many people, you know what happens? Everybody kind of blends in together. Nobody really stands out. Or certainly, at least, not as many stand out as they should. Just trying to cram in a lot here tonight. It was too much. The opening was simple enough. Like CM Punk's coming out to do commentary for the night. Okay, whatever, fine. Adam Cole versus Jungle Boy is your first match. Okay, I get it. I give this to Adam Cole. His entrance and shit is over as hell, consistently. I cannot take that away from him. It is better to be over for something than nothing at all. And that shit with the crowd week in and week out is really, truly over. I think you're really working in a counterproductive way trying to make him a villain or a heel as opposed to a more natural hero or baby face. But I think Adam Cole's in a good spot here in AEW because he has a chance to stand out a little bit more than he did in WWE. Uh, I don't think he's phenomenal on the mic, but he certainly can run laps around a lot of these losers on the AEW roster. And, you know, as far as the physical elements, like at 200 pounds, shit, he's tipping the scales on the heavy end compared to some of these other dudes. But when you look at, you know, the connection with the audience, like it's really great. The Jungle Boy stuff, though, just... There's so many other people you could put in this spot that could do more, that have more skills at this point. To the people talking about, well, why would you do this to a future main event star? If this is a future main event star based off of who he is right now, like you should worry about the future of AEW. They go way too far out of their way to protect this guy. They go way too out of their way to feature this guy. If you gave other people this spot, this opportunity, they would do more with it, I promise you. Like full stop. You take away the music and the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy is vanilla as fuck. Admit it. Accept it. Unbelievable, man. Match is cool and all. You know, the one Hurricanrana spot that Jungle Boy did do, I'll give him credit. Like, that looked pretty sick. But then, of course, within 30 seconds, they're no-selling in and back to doing other shit because we've got to get shit in because that's how stupid wrestling is. But after this match that Adam Cole wins and the crowd love, here comes the Elite, and, you know, it was a segment to ultimately tease uh, Danielson getting another shot at Kenny Omega wanting to fight tonight and whether or not he was going to do it and Omega saying to fight tonight and then out comes, like, Jurassic Express and Christian Cage and so forth. It was okay. Like, the first half hour of the show, I, I will grant you, it was okay. It was not bad. But it went off the rails for me really quickly after this. Uh, for those of you that said Andrade was going to do great things in AEW, you didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. Or let me say this. It's not that you didn't know what you were talking about. It's that AEW doesn't know what the hell to do with him. Or he's just not that good. 
and you just overplayed your hand here. Because this shit was stupid. And every time I see him every week, I'm say, I keep waiting for what's so great about him? What's so special about him? He sucks. Right now, he sucks. There are two opinions to have on him right now. Is he sucks or you're wrong saying he doesn't suck. And we can be a argument of, of about different things and have disagreements on different things. Like you guys are going to have a jungle boy with me, blah, 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 blah. But you cannot possibly look at Andrade and think that this is how you should be featuring somebody. You should not be looking at this right now and saying, this guy's a star. You should not be looking at this right now and saying it anyway that this is interesting or compelling television because it clearly isn't. Um, it just isn't. I will say I appreciate the New York crowd. In this case, or I think it was Rochester, wasn't it this week? Yeah. Uh, giving Cody Cena the Cena treatment that he so richly deserves. Boo this man. Boo! There is nothing redeemable about him. There is nothing likable about him. Everything about him screams somebody that you want to hate, that you should hate. That's where the money is. And it's only because of his own personal insecurities that he hasn't made the obvious business move that's been staring him in the fucking face for over a year now. There is no other justification for this. It's stupid. When you got Arn Anderson sitting there talking about he'd pull out the Glock and he'd spray Malachi's brains off and then says, Lee Johnson, come on, after the tag match, and he got you sitting there looking stupid and the people are cheering Arn and booing your ass, ding dong, dumb dick, there's a problem here. The fans don't like you. The fans don't like your wife. You are hateable in a lot of ways. Run with that. Go with that. Make some fucking money off of that. Because the type of heat that Cody could get as a heel, MJF couldn't fucking touch. Instead, he wants to sit there and go against the grain and blah, blah, blah. And he wants to do some founder shit. You do that founder shit right into oblivion. Uh, then there was a six-man tag with Moxley, Kingston, and Allen taking on Bear Country and Anthony Green. This didn't last all that long. You know, a longer squash match, if you will. Then you got the frickin' Dark Order tribute match for Brody Lee. 16-man tag. Cool. You saw a negative one. Okay. At this point in time already, a little more than an hour into the show, how many fucking people do you need to see on one night? A one two-hour show? This is ridiculous. Leo Rush apparently is all elite again. I thought he was before, and then he retired. What the fuck's going on here? How long until he quits again? Three months? Dan Lambert's there with the men of the year, and you know, at least Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page got some time to talk here a little bit. Uh, but what do you do with them next? And you know, it's like, did you need this on the show again? You got too many fucking people. Trying to fit too much shit in. Made sure to make room for Hikaru Shida, though, to talk about being there next week to take on Serena Deeb. Yip, yip, whoopity do. So she'll get the match on fucking Dynamite, but somebody like Jade Cargill, who's actually kind of legit over, you know, you'll put her on Rampage, the least, the lesser watched show by a good margin that's pretty all leg white to me. Um, but, but, we gotta make sure again that we find a way to put Penelope Ford in an in-ring match. The hell is going on here? The Bunny and Penelope Ford versus Anna and Ty? Like, come on. This is seriously the best you can do with your damn women's division? Holy fuck. WWE does some stupid things and some bad things and has some crappy people at the top of their women's division. But my God, they run circles around this shit. They just do. And if you can't give them credit for that, then you are just being a goddamn mindless, brainless sheep at this point. This is horrendous. Penelope Ford is continuing to get in-ring action on a weekly basis. Why? Unbelievable, man. I, I would argue probably the best thing of the entire night, for my eyes, was the MJF promo where he's talking about the four pillars of AEW. Now, I will point out when he's referencing the different names, you'll notice they are all pillars made of marble. There ain't no charcoal colors there if you get my drift. They're all marble pillars. 
But the promo was very good. Darby Allen coming out. Yes, you have to cringe when, um, when, when he grabs the mic and he talks. It's not so good. But, you know, the bringing up the shit of the uncle and saying he can't gonna play mind games. Like, it, the segment really worked. And here's what I'll say. Stinger early in the night. At the end of that six-man tag, hit the Scorpion Death Drop on Anthony Green. Here, Darby Allen, he's got something going on with MJF. <laughs> all I've got to say, Stinger, all I've got to say is 24 days, 24 days until Bound for Glory. Darby's doing something. Let him do his thing. CM Punk's doing nothing. You're doing nothing. The stars have a line, Stinger. Sign on the line that is dotted. CM Punk. Let's do big business. Let's go with a young main event talent like Sting. Sting versus CM Punk at Bound for Glory. Must happen. It needs to happen. It has to happen. And by God, we want it to happen. We being who? You, 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 me, you, all of you. We should start some type of change.org petition. At least this one might actually have a chance of getting some traction here. But this segment, again, like I said, was good. And I, like I said, I want to be clear. There were some good things on the show that I did enjoy. It was just a lot of clusterfuck, a lot of crowded shit. You know, some bleh matches and dumb segments. And that's that. Main event, TNT Championship. Match between Miro and Sammy Guevara was pretty good. Um... You know, I know you had been building up to this, and I know, like, you put the TNT title in this spot because a lot of people associate Brody Lee with it. That's fine. Uh, they pulled the trigger on Sammy Guevara winning here. Huh. I don't know how to feel about that one. Was it really time to take the strap off of Miro? Is Sammy Guevara the type of guy you really want to be the TNT champ right now? Hmm. That said... Crowd really was behind Sammy Guevara, really behind him winning this stuff. So it's fine, whatever. So at least I'll say the show opened well, it closed well. It was that sandwich, the meat, that middle hour or so in between was drizzling shit. The best thing was getting to see Sting sending a message to CM Punk, bound for glory. <laughs> Ooh, you gotta bring out the Joker sting for this one. <laughs> and then Arn Anderson talking about pulling out his Glock, his cock, his Glock, whatever the fuck. That was magnificent. And it made Homelander Chodes look like the Chode that he is. But please, please, try to get sympathy on him. And Cody, try to get sympathy for yourself. That founder type of shit. Try to work through the hate. Let me know how that fucking goes for you. But this show had too much bad to be great. Come on, guys. Stop calling shows like this bangers. Stop calling shows like this great. It can be good. Not everything has to be great. Not everything has to be transcendent. You can have some good and you can have some bad. And this show absolutely had some of each this week. And if that bothers you, then perhaps you should take a look in the mirror and ask yourself, like, what types of standards do you really have for professional wrestling anymore? Because, objectively, you cannot look at this show from top to bottom and think this was great. That's just insane.